Today we're gonna to be talking about the updates I've done, at last done to the Nissan. First thing we're first, you guys know we got shocks. We got four different shocks, or they're not different, but two different pairs that are from Carbon Shocks. They're a new shock company on the block. Um, trying them out, so I'm pretty excited to see how they handle. Uh, we're about a week away from King of the Hammers, which I'm trying to make, but we'll see. You know, you never know what life throws at you. <laughs> Come over. Can't see. Okay, there we go. Lighting's good. Yeah. All right. So this is my original King 2.5 coilover that you guys uh, have seen on, my, on the front of my truck for quite a while. All right. Next to it is his new friend, uh, 3.0. My bad. Carbon 3.0 by 10 uh, quadruple bypass shock. Um, it's also a remote reservoir shock. We are going to be trying these out here soon. Uh, why did I go with 3.0s over 2.5s? Because with shocks, the more fluid, the better dampening you have. The body is bigger, that way it can accommodate for more fluid. Um, and I'll be able to dampen out the hits a little bit better. Uh, come on, one more time. And then I got this bump stop that was originally down here, but now we're bumping off the upper. Um, since we got the space now with the engine cage and everything, we can now do that. So let's move to the back. Whoa, 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 hold on. It's different lighting, so. Oh, okay. Do you want to cut? Yeah. It's what the hell? What? <laughs> I was not expecting that. You thought it was going to flip up? Yeah. Let me get you a stool. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about what uh, what updates actually got done to the truck. Um, I think the last one was before we took it down to Tanner's. So since it going to Tanner's, we he basically laid out the whole groundwork for the engine cage. So if you look over here, the engine cage structure was all made by him. It's tied into the inside of the truck or tied to the cab cage. Um, we also sealed the firewall, which I did later on with uh, some what like 316s plate or something, something like that. Maybe it's a little bit smaller. I think it's, it might be eighth inch, but uh, and then we use silicone to kind of help seal it up. Some spots I need to go back over and uh, repaint it, just so that we can kind of lessen how much uh, debris is getting into the cab. I mean, it's nice AC, but I don't want all this dirt coming in and going into my mouth, you know. Uh, other than that, you can see where he kind of came off the frame, and we had to kind of skew this tube here to accommodate for the power steering pump. I changed over some of the reservoirs to uh, all metal because the other ones are plastic. So I got these off Amazon and they kind of hooked up cool. I had to make a couple brackets in order to fit them up and change over some hardware. Um, we had to, the firewall had to be, oh my bad, not the firewall, the core support. We had to move back into place and tie it back into the cab in order to set up points for doing the fiberglass and stuff which took a while just to get everything right and it's still the fitment's not very perfect but i mean it's good enough um it's definitely one of those things that we'll get to down the road once we know that the the truck functions well um so besides that fiberglass engine cage seal the cab new reservoirs he bumped off the upper um like i just mentioned running a different shock package uh, just a little bit different just for now because that's all we can accommodate in the upper control arm until we do either a J arm or a I stopped recording. Sorry. On oh, accident. So, oh, okay. Okay. You don't have to start. You just start over from when you said uh, J arm. Yeah Ready to accommodate for the J arm uh, if I can do a J arm down the road Then I can fit a much bigger bypass or coil over but for now That's pretty much the best packaging that I can fit within the control arm without doing too much rubbing and I still have to trim 
Well, we still have to get with Tanner and trim the upper a bit um, to clear the 3 a little bit better. That way we're not binding because any type of binding is going to be bad. Bad news when I'm out there. Um, on that, we there's we're still going to be planning on. I'm still going to be trying to make a valence piece to go across to cover this because the hood only comes to about here and leaves this exposed. So I want to get a piece of aluminum or something like that and maybe get like some Zeus type style fasteners. That way you can unbuckle and maybe who knows get some windshield wipers down the road. But we're not going to be too luxury pre runner. Um, on that, let's see, for the front, I think that pretty much wraps up all the updates he's done, besides the reconfiguring and uh, the engine cage, all the other stuff that was done was mostly wiring, uh, deleted ABS, um, that was a big one. Uh, so yeah, let's move to the rear. Ready. Okay, for the rear, we swapped out the 2.5 bypasses that I originally had. There were 2.5 by 16 double bypasses. Um, uh, these are 3.0 by 18 uh, quadruple bypass um, bypass shocks from also from carbon. This is the original 2.5 coilover, 2.5 by 14. So we're running a 14 and an 18. Um, that gives us about we're about strapped about like 26. Um, I think it's 26 and a half if I remember correctly. Uh, other than that, we got that the shocks. We, the bump is in the same place. The frame's all the same. We updated to, you can come back here. Oh, I made this too. I welded this up. A buddy helped me. You know, my little welding skills. All right, let's, come back. let's get back to what I was talking about. The full floater system. This is uh, usually, this, this is your go-to with off-road trucks, drag cars, just because of where uh, this system versus like a semi flange axle it puts distributes the weight in a different area than what a typical axle does and it kind of helps it It's a lot stronger than your traditional axle and you're not going to be <laughs> Stuck out in the desert because you blew up your end um, So I'm running a 35 spline axle the brakes are GM just generic GM brakes um, The whole full floater kit is from solid axle industries the third member is from quick performance. It's got a 567 gear ratio, full spool. Um, so it's the spool is it's hard to drive on the street. It's not as comfortable <laughs> as it used to be without a spool. The brake system has changed up a little bit. Um, other than that, oh, and also the housing. The housing's from, uh, oh, I forget the name of it. Dang, I can't remember. You can insert it later in text. <sighs> yeah, I'll insert it later, guys. Sorry. Uh, WC, I forget the name. Uh, let's see. So the floater, the shocks. Uh, we did a fuel cell cradle. I don't know if you can see up here. I don't know how oh, high you can see. Good. Aluminum fuel cell cradle. My buddy down the street, Scott, he uh, cut those out for me, polished them up. And that way we're not relying on those good old Harbor Freight straps to keep that fuel cell in anymore. We got something that's reliable. It's going to not fling my fuel cell out, you know, if I ever rolled off a bit. Um, and I think that's about it for the rear. Same wheel setup. So there's nothing else really, really different. But thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hope to see you next time. Maybe. And give you an update at KOH. You're not going to give your wife a shout out? Shout out to my wife for putting up with me and not divorcing me. I meant for recording the video. Oh, so thanks, thanks to my wife for uh, recording the video. <laughs> I really appreciate you. <laughs>